Hi guys, this is Drew from the Cellcast. Uh, we are finally moving into season three of our re-releases of Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, we're of course, like as I've said before, we're doing this as a prep prep for Star Trek Lower Decks season four, which we're going to be covering uh, as the episodes come out, and we're going to be starting with on Labor Day the Star Trek's Lower Decks Strange New Worlds crossover episode those old scientists so keep an eye out for that on labor day this episode however we are looking at grounded and the least dangerous game this was on originally on our Hal's moving castle episode uh, so uh if you want to hear the rest of anything we talked about that may have come from that go check out that episode uh but thank you all anyway for listening to us and here is your next your your next episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We are starting season three that now on Star Trek Lower Decks. Mm -hmm. The and before we get too far into this, I want to point out some stuff that I have missed. Okay. Uh, in the opening sequences during season two, mm -hmm. the scene there where the the ship the Cerritos sees you know the Romulans firing on the Borg cube and then yep. turns around and runs away very mm -hmm. fast. Uh, in season two, they added pack led ships to that battle scene. Oh, okay. And now in season three, they added a few Klingon ships and a giant crystalline entity. Hmm. Wanted to throw that in there since we have not brought that up. I got you. Also, uh, I failed to mention that, especially with this first episode, is when I noticed that the um, the album art, for lack of a better term, yeah. for the seasons are based on the movie posters for the star trek movies so season one was based looks is it has similar things it with, does yeah with star trek the motion picture mm -hmm. the uh season two is a near replica of the wrath of khan drew struzan poster mm -hmm. and uh this one is reminiscent of the search for spock poster it with is. rutherford as spock mm -hmm. which is really interesting considering the season mm -hmm. so we're gonna start it with season three episode one grounded directed by jason zurich and chris kula if you remember our last episode at the end of the last episode uh captain freeman was being arrested for blowing up the packled planet mm -hmm. uh in this episode mariner enlists her friends on a rogue mission to exonerate her mother as captain freeman faces a military tribunal for the destruction of packled planet uh, getting into the guest cast for this, this is the introduction of a character that will be showing up a couple of times, more times in this episode, and I that gotcha. being Carlos Alazarqui, who we just brought up in the Star Trek, the uh, Owls Moving Castle as one of the uh, That's right. additional voices. Okay, yeah. He, in this episode, is playing Admiral Les Buenamigo. Hmm. He is, shows up quite a number of times. And may have already actually shown up before. Really? But that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Phil Lamar returns as Alonzo Freeman. Bobby Moynihan is the voice of both Carlton Dennis and Gavin. Gavin was the guy on the Phoenix. Oh, that joined yeah. Crew. And Car Carlton Dennis is the uh, transporter guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, Kari Walgreen played uh, Sylvia Ront, the news anchor, at the beginning of the episode. Mm -hmm. And this episode also features a returning Trek actor in the form of James Cromwell. Yeah. Who returns playing Zeph from Cochran, or at least his amusement park hologram. Yes. <laughs> which I absolutely love in this episode. Yeah. Uh, getting into the trivia for this, uh, in in the at the end when they're doing the, when they're showing the end of the news broadcast, uh, it is shown that a small boy, a small human boy, has somehow discovered the solution to Fermat's last theorem, which John Luke Picard was working on uh, on a solution for it during his off time, as had Tobin Dax in a couple episodes of Star Trek. Okay, this was like an impossible math problem mm. to solve, and somehow this one little human boy figured it out. Mm. Uh, Mariner's father is given his full name, Alonzo Freeman, with the abbreviation of Zoe as his nickname. It is also the first time both Captain Freeman and Admiral Freeman are unseen together. Huh. Outside of, you know, being on screens. Yeah, that's right. Cisco's Creole Kitchen, as well as its alligator and dinner menu display, makes a return appearance in animated form. The last time it appeared was in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, image in the sand hmm. this is captain you know on um, deep space nine you had captain cisco the mm -hmm. leader of uh, the the captain. commanding officer on yeah. deep space nine this is his father's cajun uh restaurant oh okay interesting rutherford wears a sweater identical to one worn by jake cisco and boimler also wore a vest design also worn by jake when he entered cisco's huh uh Ketracel white hot hot sauce is a reference to the drug Ketracel white, which the Dominion used to provide the Jim Hadar with all the necessary nutrients they needed and to ensure their loyalty to the founders. The, the Jim Hadar were the, um, the shock troops oh. that were controlled by drugs to keep them loyal. And so they would fight. Oh, okay. And now it's a hot sauce. Apparently. <laughs> okay. Or at least it's named after that. Wow. This episode includes several crossover characters referenced in various forms, including the aforementioned James uh, Zephram Cochran, voiced by James Cromwell. Uh, he recreates many of the, and the episode also recreates many of the scenes and elements from that, from the appearance of Bozeman, Montana in uh, Star Trek First Contact. Yes. There are two non-speaking appearances also made by Tuvok, from mm -hmm. Star Trek Voyager. He was the security chief aboard Voyager. Mm -hmm. And Morgan Bateson from the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Cause and Effect. Interesting thing about Morgan Bateson, that was the one that helped them find the uh, the evidence that Freeman oh, was... Oh, yeah, yeah, He is actually... The actor who played him in Cause and Effect was Kelsey Grammer. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why you mentioned that before. Right. And... He looks a lot like Kelsey Grammer in animated form in this, huh. which I thought was interesting. And also, Tuvok looks a lot like uh, uh, the actor, also. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, the FNN news ticker uh, also referenced the now Admiral Ad Edward Jellico, previously seen in the Star Trek Next Generation two part episode, Chain of Command, part one and two, and Sonny Clemens, who previously appeared in the Next Generation season one episode, The Neutral Zone. The funny thing about Sonny Clemens, mm -hmm. he is actually a country music star from the 20th century. Really? Who got frozen because uh, cryogenics were a uh, fad mm -hmm. at the time. And he got the, the, their, the, the station the satellite that was keeping them safe, him and like two other people. Uh, apparently during World War III, they didn't bother keeping up with where that satellite happened to that satellite. Oh and gosh. it went off into deep space. And the Enterprise D is the one that found it. Huh. You ever want to see something weird? Go look at that episode because this guy from the 20th century trying to figure out how to operate replicators <laughs> was, I think it was funny, but that's all. It's a, it's a subpar episode in general, unfortunately. Mm. Um, Zephram Cochran's statue, which is described, which was described by Jordy LaForge in Star Trek first contact is shown on screen as well as other visual tributes to the film, including the crash and burn bar, a playground replica of T. Plana Hoth, the Phoenix, and the inclusion of the song Magic Carpet Ride 
by Steppenwolf. Mm -hmm. Carlton Dennis wears the late uh, 2360s, early 2370s Starfleet uniform worn for the four and a half seasons of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Generations, and throughout Star Trek Voyager. Boimler's hair is confirmed to be dyed purple rather than simply appearing to be purple mm-hmm. due to the show's palette. The Type 6A shuttlecraft Yosemite that was previously destroyed in Where Pleasant Fountains Lie mm-hmm. is replaced in this episode by the Yosemite 2. The Raisin Vineyards of the Boy- Boimler family have parallels with Chateau Picard, and Boimler's and Picard's preference to being in Starfleet. Unlike Picard's appreciation for his family's history of winemaking, Boimler's finds the process of drying grapes to be unbearably dull. Uh, the stealing of the Cerritos from the Starbase is very similar to what happened in the uh, to the USS Enterprise in The Search for Spock. Mm-hmm. And Captain Freeman calling the Pakled's plan a classic Pakled Samaritan snare uh, is referencing the Star Trek Next Generation episode, Samaritan Snare, which first introduced the Pakleds. Mm. This is also the final episode in the Pakled arc, as far as we know. Okay. So, yeah, we won't have to deal with Pakleds for a little bit. At least. Uh, okay. For the moment. For the moment. Who knows in season four? Uh, what are your thoughts on this episode? Oh, in very classic style, be like everyone saying, be like, hey, don't do anything rash. Don't do anything rash. And of course, Mariner does something rash. <laughs> Yes. Well, I understand why she does it because she wants, like, she knows her mother is innocent and she's going to do everything in her power mm-hmm. to do that, even though, be like, her father is telling her, it's like, hey, trust in the system, trust in Starfleet. And obviously, be like, her father, be like, his, be like, his trust is founded, be like, uh, the captain is uh, acquitted of all charges. And it's that same rashness and, uh, bullheadedness not to listen but to go sh- charging head forward into without like you know taking into account maybe things are going to turn out right mm-hmm. and I love how this episode ends is where Mariner is sitting with her parents and of course she's ranting raving about crap and her parents are like like yeah the Cerritos is your last chance this was your last chance it still is your last chance it still is your last chance and it's like oh yeah, I'm putting you on be like you are no longer under my command. You're under her number one. Well, she is still technically under her command. Yeah. But the whether or not she stays on the ship yeah. or gets yeah, that's right, because it's, shut, it's, uh, kicked out of Starfleet is yeah. gonna be up to ransom. Yeah, ransom. Which I'm like when when ransoms would be like, I'm your mother now. I'm like, oh ho, ho, yes, thank you. <laughs> And this will come up more in the next episode. Yes, agreed. But I enjoy, I enjoy because uh, the the point when they when they do get to the Phoenix and their their very brash idea. It's like okay, we can't beam aboard because of these these <laughs> these aliens, which is hysterical to me. Yes, <laughs> when when, the, when uh, uh Tinley being tinly it's like oh yeah we're doing an experiment with these these aliens and it's like oh that is disturbing but funny <laughs> yeah Ugh. but i enjoyed the episode i enjoyed it when mariner like it was this is the end of, be like you are at the end of your rope mm-hmm. be like if be like the commanding officer be like be like is looking for any way to get you kicked out of Starfleet, this is gonna be it, right? And I, when I was when I saw that, when the entire uh Freeman family was together, it was like, oh, this is cool. And of course, Mariner's going off, and uh, the captain's like, we just let her get away with everything, she literally gets away with everything. And and then it's me like, it's like, yeah, this is your last chance, be like, be like, yeah, the Cerritos is your last chance. And I, I just I found that very good. And I was like, I to me, who has not watched all of a season three yet, uh watching it as we review it, mm-hmm. it's me, it's like i does Mariner get kicked out of Starfleet? I will watch and see. I'd be like, obviously I'm getting a reaction, but I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, of course. Of course I not. know how it ends. Uh, of course not. not going wait, wait, nudge, nudge. Uh, 
but we shall see, or at least I will see. Everyone's saying, be like, watch the last episode. <laughs> no, watch all the episodes. Watch all I, the episodes. I do understand why you're going at it at the rate you're going. Exactly. You are fine. Yes. So, yes, this is a good episode. It's a good start to season three. This, when I, when I first watched this episode mm-hmm. and they first mentioned oh we could go to historic bozeman Mm -hmm. my heart leapt into my chest i can imagine (laughs) because here's the thing folks i grew up watching a lot of star trek Mm -hmm. but my absolute favorite star trek movie that i have the most nostalgia for i have to say it that way because six is my absolute favorite Mm. two i think is a very very good movie and it's like right there with uh six Mm -hmm. in terms of like it's only separated by a couple of degrees for right. me. First contact is the first one I saw first Star Trek movie I saw in a theater. Mm. I'm 90% sure. Mm. Generate I may have seen generations in a theater, but I would have been a little young at the time. Mm. But um this is the first one I have I definitely remember seeing in a theater. Mm-hmm. And it is the in my opinion, the best of the next generation movies. Okay. And it's the one that's like the least Star Trek in a way. Okay. But yeah, it's also a lot, very much Star Trek. And the whole thing with Zephram Cochran uh, and everything that was going on in Bozeman, mm-hmm. Montana is just fun for me. So I find out we're going to Bozeman. I am already super excited to see what you're going to do here. <laughs> so they get there. And of course, the music goes straight into the theme to Star Trek First Contact. Mm -hmm. I'm going, oh, (laughs) I'm here. My childhood has just reared its ugly head, and I am enjoying this. And and you're seeing things like the the statue Mm -hmm. of Zephram Cochran, the the crash and burn bar, Mm -hmm. the... uh, the T Plana Hoth, the, the Vulcan ship that mm-hmm. made first contact as a playground, mm-hmm. I find hilarious. And then they, they're still launching Phoenix uh, replica rockets because they're actually amusement park rides. But I was like, please tell me they are going to have, they're going to take one of those. Please tell me they're going to take, they're going to, they're going to capture one of these uh-huh. ships and use it. And then you hear. Z- and then, and then the voice starts talking, and it's like, okay, yeah, that's obviously supposed to be Zeph from Cochran. Wait a minute. Is that James Cromwell? <laughs> it is James Cromwell. They got James Cromwell to come back. <laughs> I have no idea what James Cromwell thinks of Star Trek at this point, but they got him to come back for to play a stupid little cameo role in an animated show on a streaming service. Uh-huh. Dude, you are, I, I'm loving you people more and more. And then he gets great lines like, oh, you caught me while I'm just doing some, some uh, taking care of some last minute repairs. And you should f- take care of any last minute snacks because there's no none allowed in the in the ride vehicle. I'm like, this, that's hilarious. It's like, <laughs> you people went to Disney World to, <laughs> to figure out what he needed to say for this scene, didn't you? <laughs> oh, uh, man. And then... We're in the Phoenix and they're getting ready to launch off. He says, and one last thing, let's rock and roll. And then they start playing step up uh, magic carpet, ride. I'm going, my childhood nostalgia is complete for this episode <laughs> because there's no way you can, they went so hard uh-huh. into playing into first contact in a way that there's no reason they had to for the story. Mm-hmm. Because they could have just done a quick, oh, yeah, we're do-. It's like, thank you. Thank you for leaning into it this hard. Because I absolutely love this. And that five minutes, that's only a five minutes of this whole episode, yeah. is like, is what's stuck in my memory from this episode. Yeah. I forgot that this was the episode with the pink purple aliens that attached themselves to the Serena. So I was watching this. And then, yeah, and then I only saw this like two months ago. Uh-huh. But, uh, and even th- all that stuff, I especially liked the fact that the Cerritos' hull plating has not been reattached yet mm-hmm. from the end of the last episode. 
Uh, so I, I, I like that in there. Um, and the whole thing of all the stuff on Earth, because this was actually the first Lower Decks episode to mostly take place on Earth. Okay. Previously in season two, there was a scene, there was like one scene mm -hmm. where they were on Earth and then they got out of there in a hurry. Mm. So uh yeah this was i i absolutely enjoyed this episode and i love how they didn't have to do any of this they didn't, didn't have to do a cotton pick any of the any of the stuff they did this because mm -hmm. the system was going to take care of it and because we're following the b plot mm -hmm. of what of, of this of what the story here we actually get this nice oh yeah this is what happened in the a plot we had we had two other star trek cameos but we're not paying for voice actors for Though I'm fairly certain Kelsey Grammer would come back in a heartbeat. Mm. Um, and we did all those other stuff. It's like, you know, that would have been cool to see too, but I'm kind of happy with the story I got. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's my thoughts on Grounded, or at least the middle five minutes of it, because that's what I focused on. Right. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the second episode all tonight. Right. Uh, the Least Dangerous Game directed by Michael Mullen and written by Garrick Bernard. On a tropical paradise planet, Mariner questions Commander Ransom on how he structures his away team. Boimler, on the other hand, makes a bold career decision. Oh my gosh. A very <laughs> bold career very decision. Very bold decision. Uh, in this episode, Troy Baker plays a, the character Sherwins. Hmm. Nolan North is both Lars Lundy and Cranch. Hmm. And we get Paul Shear back as Lieutenant Commander phillips hmm. who nearly became king in this episode oh, gosh remember what causes him to have to leave starfleet and where he ended up in oh. this episode oh <laughs> oh <laughs> oh they only barely talk about this yes, they do oh, but they do gosh. mention this like because i didn't recognize it the first time i watched it because it'd been so long since i've seen where pleasant flat fountains lie yeah i'm like hang on he shouldn't be going down to that planet he should he's got he's got very good reasons not to yeah I, I was i was so confused on that i was like he would be like no i can't do that right also we have another special guest star reprising their role mm. in virtual form that being jg hertzler who reprises his role as klingon general martok mm. or really at this point he's a chancellor yeah the leader of the klingons yeah he uh was a major character in star trek deep space nine oh, okay uh this title references uh the, the title of the episode references the most dangerous game a 1924 short story about a big game hunter who is himself hunted on an island by a russian aristocrat crat wow. the story is often referenced in science fiction including in numerous star trek episodes where humans or other sentient species are hunted for sport including the original series episode the squire of gothos the deep space nine episode captive pursuit voyager the killing game and enterprise rogue planet the game that they're playing at the very beginning is batleths and binox mm -hmm. which the name is a clear reference to the classic tabletop rpg dungeons and dragons mm -hmm. while also referencing elements of the star trek the next generation board game a klingon challenge mm. i had this board game not i wish i still had this board game <laughs> literally what it was is it was you had a board you, you had this board that has that had the mm -hmm. you know picture of the enterprise with a with a you know spaces to move around mm -hmm. and you had to do these different things on the ship in order to gain access to the bridge okay the bridge was locked down by the klingon who came on and stole the enterprise bear in mind this is the enterprise d yeah said klingon was played by the actor who also played uh chancellor gowron in the next generation which this episode also references as uh rutherford was wanting to get the gowron expansion oh, okay but it was played the, the this what like like the that board game there was a Kling, the klingon would come on on a vhs tape okay. you had to plug in your vcr and every once in a while while you're deciding making rounds he would come and say the one who you the one who is moving now answer me human 
experience beach or something. He'd tell you what to do. Yeah. Like some special thing. Or he'd say the character who's closest to the engine room do such and such things. You'd have to go do that because that's just how it worked. Yeah. Or the you actually could assign ranks. And it came with like stickers you could put on there. I don't I that's probably the reason I don't have it anymore, is I lost all the stickers. Ah. Uh. But uh it was it was a cool little fun board game. Okay. Um I kind of wish I still had it, even though the VHS part would be a little hard to use at this point. Yeah. But uh, uh, this episode, like I said, mentions the return of General Martok, albeit the host of the Ferengi program based on the famous Klingon Martok and Gowron being referenced as the expansion pack. The Klingon blade ref weapons, Rutherford, Tindy, and Boimler wheel during the game include a Hegbat ceremony knife, a Mechleth, and a knife similar to which was an, and a knife similar to that which Worf kept hung on the wall in his quarters on the Enterprise D. Uh, though described as Spring Ball, which was first mentioned in Deep Space Nine episode Shadow Play and first seen in Deep Space Nine for the cause, the background and costumes are the same ones used for Racquetball as depicted on Deep Space in Deep Space Nine episode Rivals. Mike Mahan took responsibility for the error. Hmm. The Spring Ball actually looked a lot different. Oh, okay. Rutherford said he was having so much fun down on the planet that he thinks he should transfer to Visions again, referencing the Season 1 episode on Voice, where he spent time exploring the Command Sciences and Security Divisions on the Cerritos before returning to Engineering. Mm -hmm. Mariner's skydiving stunt briefly resembles the scene in, in Star Trek 2009, yes. in which Kirk, Sulu, and Olsen mm -hmm. perform an orbital skydive down to Vulcan in order to sabotage the Narada's drill platform. Olsen never returned. No. Interestingly enough, this episode does not include any scenes on the bridge of the Cerritos. That's right, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. What are your thoughts on this episode? My thoughts, oh my gosh. Would uh Boimler and his I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> oh my gosh, like I I understand like you want to get out of your comfort zone and like just not do everything safe. Right. And it's like, yeah, it's a bold move. But when he like he steps up and does that one thing, he doesn't realize what he's stepping into. <laughs> right. You're like, oh, you are my prey now. It's like, hey, excuse me. And like, and oh, I, yeah. And I love as he's being chased through the he finally catches up with Captain Freeman. He says, Captain, I'm being hunted on the ship. Oh, I can't have that security. Come back to such and such level. Yeah, I was talking to it, it, it's this cranch guy. He's hunting me for his prey. I kind of agreed. I was just, oh, is that belay that order, security? You better hurry. I hear he's I hear he's very fast. <laughs> and then he turns the corner. He's like, ah! <laughs> he's there. And Cranch stops for a small second and talks and says, Thank you for the mimosas earlier today. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> that was so good. It definitely when when Crouch like finally pins him down yes. and takes a selfie with them. <laughs> yeah, because they believe in catch and release. <laughs> catch and release. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was hysterical. Oh, was oh my gosh. I, I I was I was like, oh my gosh, how's this gonna end? Of course you can't kill Boimler. <laughs> no, you you can't kill him. You can't kill Boimler. But it was just it was I mean so... we nearly killed Rutherford last season, but he was fine. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That was that was just perfect. Like it's it's that idea that like you you want to step out and be bold and like mm -hmm. you know especially try to... after we find out Vendome is no longer on the ship he was the Bolian officer mm. was on many of the episodes and now he's the captain of his own ship with an entire Bolian senior staff that's right and oh all my blue heads yeah <laughs> and just oh my gosh Boimler anyway. is just more like what no, 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 no. I do everything right but it's just more this like guy he never steps out and does anything it. it's like he was also higher on the ranks than you. He didn't have to go as far. True. He was almost senior staff. Very true. But oh my gosh, the uh when uh Mariner and remind me of his name again. Uh Cranch. No, the when Mariner and oh, Mariner and Ransom. Ransom. Thank you. I always forget Mariner's name. That is absolutely I I I love it that Mariner has to be like she like she she can't just go jump off and do whatever she wants and she, like she's trying so hard. she is trying so hard 
and even ransom she, is just more like even the, the, the guy Ran- who this is the most boneheaded thing ransom has ever done yeah agreed no matter how you look at it because not only should the engineering people have been doing the, the space lift yeah preparing the space lift he was the perfect uh ambassador <laughs> to go talk to these people yes that why are terrible. you doing this i mean other than i know you're not you don't want uh mariner to have a cushy job yeah while you while she's working to under have you. fun yeah and especially since you know who these people are you know what billups's issue with what they are going to do is yes <laughs> yeah maybe should have thought about this just a little bit more yeah and I love how like more and more he gets over his head mm-hmm. and it'd be like, he's got these engineers in a place like they don't know how to deal with it. And it's like, yeah, eh, uh, uh, yeah sure. Just like, you know, talk bold from yeah. your diaphragm. <laughs> Just ask for parley. Speak from your gut. It's like we tried that. It didn't work. We showed her belly buttons and everything. <laughs> no, that just made it worse. <laughs> All because we didn't show our belly buttons at the, in the temple at the right time. I'm thinking, Good night. Is this what, that same planet where you where Wesley tripped over the the flower rail, destroyed some flowers, and then they had to kill him? <laughs> poor Wesley. No, <laughs> not poor Wesley. I'm actually surprised we, uh, Will Wheaton has not been in an episode yet. Oh, as much as he's been doing the uh, the Star Trek the mem- the uh, the Paramount Plus after show for all the Star Trek stuff. Yeah, he's the host of all those sh- shows. That makes and, sense. He's not on an episode of Lower Decks yet. They'll probably, Come on, guys! They'll, they'll probably get around to it in season four. He's the ultimate Lower Decker. He's the Lower Decker who got to be on the bridge. True. He's also the one we all hate. <laughs> There's a reason why everyone's favorite line from the first season mm-hmm. of Star Trek: The Next Generation is Captain Picard's line, where he says, "Shut up, Wesley." <laughs> there again i've barely watched star trek the next generation and i don't be like i don't quite understand the the wrathful hatefulness of wesley crusher but i'll eventually get there wesley crusher is that kid in school Mm -hmm. who the teachers honestly believe could do no wrong ah he was uh he already knew how to operate the enterprise d pretty much when he came on board he hacked the enterprise d when he was under the influence of the the drunk virus we talked Mm. about yeah a couple episodes ago uh when he he hacked the enterprise d and named himself captain i'm not kidding here now granted he was under the drunk virus yeah. at the time, but he had the capability to do this. Mm-hmm. The kid was overpowered as a character. He's a, yeah. And the reason they, they they did a lot of this is because he was actually Gene Roddenberry's insert character on the show. Uh, okay. And they gave it to Will Flipping Wheaton. Granted, Will Wheaton's actually, from what I've seen, is actually a pretty decent guy. Yeah. He's actually very, he's leaned in heavily to the jokes mm-hmm. about about the character to the point where uh his entire reason for will wheaton for being on the big bang theory mm-hmm. was because sheldon you know the the, yeah. the the tall geeky one yeah used to love wesley crusher on the next generation until will wheaton couldn't show up to a fan convention and then he was his most hated enemy okay yeah Will Wheaton just agreed with this. Says, yeah, we're doing that. Okay. <laughs> and he that's why he was Sheldon's rival for so long on that show. Uh, okay, then. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. This was just a good episode. It yeah. was fun. It, it was it was great that Mirror finally is like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to save my friend. <laughs> and she dives. <laughs> and she dives. And he calls her. <laughs> and she's like, oh, crap. <laughs> and she has to get off. She, she has to fly back into the structure uh-huh. climb this ladder she gets halfway up it and it turns into a climbing wall because the uh, the alien race loves health and wellness so of course they've got a rock climbing wall in the middle of their maintenance bay and then that just leads up to an elevator that shoots her the rest of the way up so that you know she can actually make it back in time and then they jump back off and they and- raise and be like oh come on we gotta jump it's yes. like, oh, okay. okay well they catch my breath <laughs> It's like, no, we don't have time for that. And they all, and they both jump off. 
he's having the time of his life much like mariner was doing the first time and she's asleep <laughs> she's falling falling asleep, asleep. <laughs> uh yeah uh, this is a good episode okay yeah i agreed uh, agreed uh yeah. next time we will be looking at the star trek lower decks episodes uh mining the mines mines mm -hmm. and room for growth and the next movie will be our start of uh christmas month yeah with muppet family christmas nice a movie that you will actually have to go do some look searching to find it mm. not you i already got you a link okay but for everybody else you'll have to go do some googling yourself i got you because uh yeah the rights on the legal rights on this one are gonna are a little impossible dicey disney and warner brothers mm. along with the remnants of jim henson probably don't get along as well as they used to in order to make a release like this mm. gotcha but that's gonna be the next thing we're, review we're gonna be reviewing so join us next time for that gotcha. in the meantime this has been drew this is jacob and we'll catch you in the next frame you can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page, Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterbox page at G. George 759. His Twitter at G. George 759 and Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at The Cellcast Podcast, on Twitch at The Cellcast Gaming, on YouTube at Cellcast, on Twitter at Cast underscore Cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L. here at the cellcast formally uh pray that for this for your thanksgiving dinner your bacon doesn't burn amen to that